All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of our State of Decay 2 Lethal Zone Guide. Um, as the beginning of every episode, Can't let that screamer get close. I want to thank you guys for the crazy amount of support you guys have been showing the series. I'm so glad that you guys are enjoying it. I'm having a blast playing it. Um, last episode, we went, we cleaned up my mistakes from the previous episode where, you know, I woke up the play cart here in the middle of town. It was... It was a mess, but we got it done. There was some infestation situation, but we got it taken care of. We got it cleaned back up. We no longer have play carts awake, um, and the map is back under control. So that was kind of my like way to show you, if you do wake up a play cart, how you can remedy the situation um, and, and, and go forward. You know what I mean? Using the, the uh, where is it? The cell tower. Yeah, the cell tower and the plague disruptor, it just makes things way, way easy for you. So, starting off today, I still have about 40 minutes left on my disruptor. And, um, I got a couple missions that reminds me to get my water turned on. Yep, water is turned on. Now, forgive me, guys, if you hear some weird noises in my background. My house is in shambles. Um, but... I, I didn't record this yesterday or the day before because of that. Uh, and I was like, man, I got to get an episode recorded. So if you do hear some weird, like, sounds, just know that there's somebody with a nail gun literally trying to fix my house right now. So <laughs> forgive me. Um, let me go ahead. And uh, I wanted to go do that scout run up north real quick to see if there was any play carts and what was near my potential base that we're, we're, we're thinking about moving into. And we can also scout for resources. Now, I don't... Um, now, one of my survivors actually has a mission. Her, Kim. You know what? Let's switch to Kim. We're going to do the scout run and her mission at the same time. Now, her mission is she wants to link up with a group of survivors and ally them and have them help us kill the blood plague. Um... So I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? You know what I mean? Well, we could, we could always use more allies. She's got a little bit of plague. I can do this. I just gotta do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me see where this group is once we get geared up here. Okay, so that's good. Go ahead and grab. Okay, so we should have more than enough uh, combat stuff there. Where is this group? Okay, so they're over here. Uh, this is actually not bad. I believe this is outside of plague territory. Um, we got to drive through some plague territory to get to them, but not a big deal. And then this group wants materials. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go up. We're going to scout up here. See if we can find a bag of materials. Generally, there's a shed like right here. Uh, we'll grab a bag, drop it off to this group, scout this area, and then we'll go down and link up with these guys. Kind of try to cut, you know what I mean? Uh, trying to come up with a plan that we can knock out as many things as possible with one go. Uh, now, this will need a repair kit, though. Let's see, this car is definitely, Van has seen better days. Now, I know I don't, I don't have too many repair kits, so, or a mechanic to craft them. There we go. Now, right now, what I would consider is what we're are like the phase of the game we're in. Um, we're on kind of like a build up and spend um, like gameplay loop. Like once you're starting to try to like get a handle on like taking play cards consistently, it, your goal is to you know do a heart, build up, do a heart, build up, do a heart, and you're kind of building and spending, building and spending. Um, Damn, I didn't put fuel in the car. Uh, let me see if I can get a can from our allies here. Literally just realized, I was like, man, I got like no gas. Hi, come on in. Good to hear 
that? No, we'll tell them. We're open to a swap if you are. Sounds good. Oh, they actually have two repair kits, though. We will grab both of those. Um, no fuel, though, unfortunately. There is a gas spot that's preluded. Okay. Um, shit. Got an outpost right here. We'll go hit. I'll drop off these repair kits, too. That sword is actually quite heavy to swing. I'm probably gonna swap out that sword. I think it's what, eight pounds? Is it? Yeah, it's eight pounds. Like, man, our stamina was just gone. Now, that's another thing. I put that out in like my new player guide, you know, people who are new to the game, period. Um, but I guess I could throw a little nugget information in here for you guys, too. Take into consideration the weight of your gear. Like, some people might just see a sword and they'll just grab it and not think, you know, oh, this thing is actually heavy as hell. You know what I mean? Like, you want to make sure your your weapons and your overall backpacks, your gear loadout is not super, super heavy. Because if you go too heavy, what ends up happening is your stamina just bleeds really, really quick um, as you're overweight. Like, right now, I'm in, like, medium carry. Uh, you want to be, be as light as possible possible you want to be as light as possible see now i dropped that heavy sword i'm dr i'm down in the traveling light um obviously we won't be able to maintain that but we can grab a, a lighter weapon like, like i said that sword was eight pounds i got one an echo uh two mamba here that we could use it's only two pounds and i'm still traveling light you know what i mean so man we got to get the gas i can't outrun that <clears throat> blood barrel hmm our best friend. Okay, so we got we got a we got a nice little stock of repair kits right now. Yeah, this bitch could actually use two. You know what? We'll throw two gas cans in only because we're gonna be traveling all the way down south too. We're gonna be doing a bit of driving right here. So we'll just double up two gas cans. Now, last episode, we also talked about going to the Bounty Broker. I never ended up getting around to it. Um, if I have enough time today, we'll probably try to swing by while that Plague Disruptor is still active. Now, at any point, we can recruit another another survivor. Um, my goal is to get up to six so we can move into that new base. Until I get the groundworks, though, set before we move, um, I'm not in any rush to recruit those survivors at the moment. But once we're, we're ready, I could at any point just go and recruit two survivors from one of my many, or, you know, two of my many enclaves. But I was also thinking about showcasing another uh, feature that you guys can take advantage of. Uh, recruiting legacy survivors on an existing community. Uh, like I said, this is a guide that I want you guys to understand. Damn, this shed is preluded. Um, all of your options that are available to you and not just, you know, what hardcore, you know, purist lethal zone gods you do you know what i mean that's not what you're obviously if you want to get to that point you can but you don't nobody just starts there you know what i mean so way too many plague zombies in this part of town yeah play card up here so we just need to, we don't have to really worry too much bloater right there This. Okay, so we do have a heart up in this area. No materials, though, unfortunately. That was my. I was hoping to get some out of that shed down the road.
Yep, more plague territory. Shit. So there's, like, two hearts up here. Now, I've never really seen this house with a play card in it. So first... Oh, uh, we got an ammo shed back here I want to reveal. Is it preluded? Nope, we can loot that out. Shed over here is looted um, also, so we're not getting no mats out of this northern area. Just got a pickup truck here. You now know where that is, so when we move over here, we'll be able to come pick that up. Check my map. We got Plague Disruptor, so that's why I'm a little more loose on where I'm, I'm willing to push. We need to take advantage of that, so I think I'm going to push right into the corner of this uh, Plague Territory, and we'll try to get the bag of materials out of there. Yeah, so if you are, you know, not enjoying that real restricted feeling of Lethal Zone and, you know, the play cards waking up, uh, get a Plague Disruptor, one that should be one of your first things you aim for, and allow you to play a lot more loose. It looks okay, but with a play cart nearby, no place can really be secure. Uh, also, I had somebody drop a comment, um, you know, bringing up, you know, I, when I play my, or when I do my videos or I play the game, I have a, uh, a strong emphasis on stealth. Okay, so as you guys can see, a lot of zombies on me right now. We're going to kind of drag them all through town here. Just got to make sure we don't run into a feral or anything stupid like that. Um... But they brought up the fact that I, I, I play the game with a strong emphasis on stealth and the, the way they worded it was almost to the point where I make it seem like there's no other way to play the game. And, and you know, that, that I should voice to you guys that there is other ways to play the game. You can play the game guns blazing. You can run around, have a more action oriented play style. That is very, very true, 100%. So um, what the commenter said is 100% in line with the truth. You can do that, but <laughs> caveat, um, holy shit, that is a lot of zombies. Um, if you're brand new to Lethal Zone, that is not... Uh, how, how would you pull that off? Because resources are hard to get. Ammo is very scarce early game. So if you sit there and you shoot everything and you play this really, really aggressive play style, you're always going to be strapped for everything. You're not going to have any resources ever because you're just constantly fighting constantly you know what i mean so like yes you can do it but it, are you going to be able to beat lethal zone as a brand new lethal zone player with that play style i mean if you can you probably don't need to watch this guide your your mechanical skills at the game are just top tier i mean it is what it is um but if you're a brand new player that just isn't a viable strategy the people that you see usually play like that are speed runners because speed running that's more of a speed runner type of like hit the ground running um go out start killing play cards immediately that that's something speed runners do you know what i mean um that's not something that somebody who's just not comfortable with the difficulty trying to figure There's out you know right the ins and outs of lethal zone get used to it I, I would never advise you to play guys to play like that but i know that's why so many people struggle with state of K lethal zone is because if if you came from other games 
you might have a more uh, aggressive play style. And I, I've seen it, you know, people do. They tend to have very, very aggressive play styles. Shit, God, I'm gonna have to break this damn door down and there's a screamer in the back. But people tend to have more aggressive play styles and people find stealth to be quite boring. Um, so they, they do, they struggle with, you know, sneaking around all the time and they just get bored. Like, dude, I wanna shoot some shit, I'm playing a zombie game. Um, that's cool, like I said, you can't, but you're gonna have a hard time in, in, in lethal if you try to play like that, at least in the beginning. Now, once you get to like the mid game and uh, you get some resources and all that stuff unlocked uh, and you know, you got your community, you're set, then you can start spending a little bit. But that, that's why I tell you guys, it's like either A, you're gonna play a semi-aggressive because you're not gonna be able to go full blow or full out. You're gonna play a semi-aggressive play style where you're kind of aggressive, but limited by the resources you have. And you're gonna play your whole playthrough like that. The whole thing. You're gonna just be barely scraping, playing semi-aggressive because until you run out of resources. Or you can play very passive, avoid fights, build up, and then go super, super hard. That's why you guys will see every play card, I'm able to go 100%. I'm able to put forth everything, play really, really aggressive, shoot a bunch of shit, have a ton of fun, and then the in-between is where you'll see me chilling, where you'll see me, um, you know, kind of sneaking around, avoiding fights, because there's 30 play cards on this map. That's 30 engagements where I'm gonna be able to go off, okay? I'm gonna be able to run around, have as much fun, make as much noise, do as much damage as I want, but if you're trying to play that aggressive playstyle the entire playthrough, you go out looting, you're killing, you're fighting. You go out killing play cards, you're killing, you're fighting. You go do missions, you're killing, you're fighting. And, and you're going to not have any resources. There's just, you're going to be just, you're not going to have anything. I could use a little help if anybody so, uh, yeah, that play style, it just doesn't work unless you're just a goat ass player, you know what I mean? But at that point, you don't need to watch this guide. So yeah, there are multiple different play styles. If you do want to play a more aggressive play style, lower difficulties, Nightmare and Below are definitely going to be a lot better for you. Lethal Zone does require you to, to kind of have a little bit of a build, a build and spend mentality though. If you want to do it effectively, you know what I mean? Okay, so I didn't bust that shed door down because I didn't want to get into a big fight. So I'm going to just drive down to this other location here. And we'll pull a bag out of here. I'm trying to just kill these guys and get away as soon as possible. So Good. Generally, you can get two rucks out of these unfinished houses. Not bad at all. There's one. I could grab another one. Uh, we're gonna bring this over to the uh, enclave. Barely worth taking. This site's cleared out now. There we go. So we got uh materials right there. Now we're obviously already here, um, so we might as well just grab whatever we can. This horde is kind of making its way down towards me. But I do want to get back in there and get that la other bag.
Got the play cart right. Yeah, that's that play cart right there. We also have a survivor activity up there. I'm not overly concerned with those. A lot of the sometimes with those survivor activities, you can get uh, recruits. Let's go drop off these materials real quick. Might swing back over and just kind of peep that survivor activity, but crawling. Must be a play cart nearby. Could always see what this oh bloater. Those are lootable. Okay, so scavenger hunt is over. Oh, nope, we don't want to trade them. I'm going to give that uh, to you. There it is. Let me see. Did they restock? I mean, they do got some uh, first aid kits, which are pretty good. I'm not going to waste the influence on them right now. Uh, just because there is some pretty expensive stuff that I want to buy in the future. Uh, to showcase for you guys um we're gonna swing the stuff down by the outpost drop it i gotta actually get some more gas we blew through a lot of our fuel already that's nasty okay now we know those are spawning um which sucks nobody likes triple feral but it is active now, guys. So um, as soon as you know Triple Feral is spawning, you want to be a bit more watchful uh, when you when you go places. Make sure you take a second before you jump out your car. Know truly what's around because people ask me all the time, hey, man, what's the best way to deal with Triple Feral? You run? <laughs> uh, even... even the best players in this game without oodles of stamina and being completely prepped for it it's a hard fight it it is a, it is a hard fight now um got some good news we found some parts to patch up our facilities soon the base is gonna be running as smooth as ever. just wait All and see right. got some kind of curveball kicking in well-oiled machine uh but yeah it's um it's a really, really hard fight. It, it, unless you're prepared for it, most of the time you're not. They just kind of come out of nowhere. The worst time you're in the middle of doing something, and then boom, all three of them are jumping on top of you. You're scrambling, trying to figure out. It's it's very, very, very tough fight. So I always tell people to avoid them. Um, and if you do get into an engagement with three ferals, your your goal is to try to isolate them and break them down one at a time. Uh, but mainly just run. Fucking just get out of there, dude. All right, let's go see what this survivor activity is like. Before we go down and check that sheriff mission. Now, right now, we're just doing a little bit of scouting. Um, missions never hurt, you know, the influence that you gain from them. Sucks that that triple feral pack is right there, man.
I was really hoping, guys, that I would get a black plague heart in this playthrough. Uh, because I've still never seen one before. I, I'm still calling bullshit that they even exist. I feel like you guys, it's like the community joke because I've done five or six Lethal Zone playthroughs with curveballs and I've never seen this black heart. So I'm still calling BS on the fact that they even exist. I already know we're going to have people in the comments. Oh, dude, I had one last week, bro. It was great. You're lying. Until I see one. Okay, so weld-oiled machine. What do we gain from this? More, f um, Better food and med production. Nice. Um, cheaper to f perform facility actions. Overall base noise reduced. That is just all good. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to seed this. Let me see, is it cheaper to craft ammo? Nope, that's the same same price, though. That one's 54 parts uh, because of the curveball. Looks okay, but with a play cart nearby. Are you kidding me, the mission's no not even here. Can really be secure. God damn it. Well, it is what it is. We'll head down south. Ugh! Bloater! That cow makes me want to puke. And you don't want them hanging out on your freaking hoods. It does so much damage. Let's see, what's the fastest way? Um, Down this way. Oof, this area is freaking rough. We can actually cut across here instead of driving all the way around the road. Now, if you are going to drive off road, make sure you take your time. You'll have run into shit like this where the elevation just changes. Flip your damn car over. Get hung up on a rock, hit a bloater. These days, you're just as likely to be killed by a human as a zombie. If you find yourself down in the two way rifle range, don't hesitate. Zombies don't shoot back, but people do. We have an interesting neighbor. Uh, Addy and the whiskey could tell you more about them. See you around. Okay. Now, folks at the Army Navy Outfitters are always up late making noise. Some people like to party no matter what, I guess. Uh-huh. Take care. 
here. Okay, so they want me to go talk to the whiskey. Or talk to whiskey. No, I gotta talk to whiskey. Okay. I was reading that so wrong, dude. Like, talk to the whiskey? What the fuck is the enclave's name? The whiskey? No, her name is whiskey. That's it. That's not a bad name. Uh, the people at the corral are downright scary. They don't seem to trust anyone. Sounds like some bad apples. Maybe I can help them. You know it. Bye bye now. So I think this mission can be quite dangerous, chat. Um, but I don't think you're forced to fight either. So as you guys can see, apostles there. I think these guys might be dead. Let's see how long do we have? We got still got ten minutes on that plague disruptor. Yeah, breathing through your nose does not help. Blech. Try to move in quietly on foot, because uh, I think you can loot their bodies. Yep, there's one of them. Oh god, I'm too late. You've turned. If you're listening out there, come save me, please. See if they have anything good on them. Usually not even worth the, worth the risk, honestly. But um, we got that plague disruptor up, so that's why I was able to more a little more willing. Uh, this is crap, and we could break this down for parts. Screwdriver really isn't even worth its weight. Might have to pick them all up just so I can loot the other guy. Sludgy. One more in here. Of course, it's locked. This window was already knocked out by the zombies. Now, on these guys, it takes a second for their like little loot to generate. There is a rare weapons case across the road too in that container. Mm, let's see, right here, bottles of stims. So made this worth it. The rest of this is pretty crap. Go we'll check this container real quick. I wouldn't mind doing a scouting run, but we got we would have to make it all the way to that cell tower right there to get a good lay of the land.
But we already did actually scout quite a bit when we drove down here. Now, I believe this is a melee weapon box. Someone was nice. To lose this. It's actually a really, really good weapon. Okay, inventory's full. Barrel. It's a good chance we're gonna have to engage him. Maybe I should look somewhere else. Might be okay if we go around the far side here and go up on the bridge. Should be able to avoid most of this. Actually, sell these two items to that enclave when we get uh, when we drive by. Oh, wasn't the breakable fence. Wow, they got okay. food, repair kits, so. energy drinks, uh, big Hank rifle. That's not a bad rifle there, 357. Oh, damn, this sells for 170, man. That's not bad. Um, I'll definitely buy the repair kit and the energy drinks. Those are good premium. This three big Hank's not that expensive. So they only want 125 for it. But then the question is, do I even have 357 to shoot with this damn thing? I don't even think I have the bullets to shoot. So yeah, we'll, we'll leave it. It is what it is. The good thing is it's a um, lever action. They never jam or break, uh, so it's cheap. But 357 Magnum rounds, we don't we don't have the the potential to or the we don't have the capability to craft those yet. So kind of just be a waste right now if I bought that. You know me, just trying to make myself useful. Okay, so these guys are up here. Um, we're gonna kind of just go and scout them. Now you can you can go close, I think they'll aggro, and then you can literally just drive away. Or you can kill them if you're hardcore, but our plague disruptor is about to be up in two minutes, so. Now I could just reactivate the plague disruptor again, um, but it is quite expensive parts-wise. Uh, but if you want to maintain, which we might actually just activate it again, because. Uh, we're at 927 parts, plus I got uh, weapons and stuff that we can still break down. And it's just that extra peace of mind, you know what I mean? take off they're right next to a play card too 
Mission done. Now we got this mission here. You know any shortcuts? You better use them. Fuel's getting a little low. We're gonna park on the back side of the church here. The only problem is these this is a story enclave. Um, a lot of the story enclaves actually will take bases. Now, if you wanted to move into this base, you'd kind of be screwed right now with this enclave because Hello? they occupy the base. Hey there. Okay, so we're just waiting to see what these zombies do. We're going to go around the front. I just don't want to fight that horde. And my survivor's getting tired, so... But as of right now, we are only 16 seconds left in our Plague Disruptor, so... We'll think about activating that again. Really, dude? I'm not going to chase you around. That looks like he's part of the network. What's up? Nope. Okay, I have a weird question to ask. So what happened to the person who needed a rescue? They sounded frantic. It wasn't me. Sorry you wasted your time. So what do we do now? Oh shit, I think these are the cannibals. I think I think this is the cannibal enclave. You are a hardy and hale looking one, can I so, um, yeah, this is a story enclave. They are the, the cannibals. Um, you play through this, and it's pretty interesting what happens at the end. But, uh, yeah. Uh, this is kind of just a little bit of flavor. This enclave doesn't really bring anything to the table. It's a damn shame. You can stop missing me now. I'm headed back. Hello. You're welcome to look around. Hi. Let's see. What do they Let's got to the trade? Yep. Sack of mystery meat. Smells a bit odd, a little odd, but it's definitely meat. I've broken open this rex set, yeah. So uh don't don't eat the mystery meat, chat. Don't eat the mystery meat. It doesn't hurt you in any way, shape, or form. You can just eat it if you want. It's still considered food, but we're good. We're growing our own veggies and stuff. Alright, so we're we're low on fuel. The survivor's tired. Um all those missions are... Wait, so now the survivor activity moved down here. Are you kidding me, man? Yeah, breathing through your nose does not help. Blech. We're up to 3,000 influence. And we haven't even gone on a big sale yet. I got a bunch of enclaves. Uh, we could go around and, and do a big dump. Sounded weird to say it like that. Let me see if as long as this area is anybody out there? Help! They're everywhere. I do have this. So what we're gonna do before I fight these guys, we're gonna activate the disruptor. 174 parts to get it activated.
Oh, good shit, dude. And could you watch my back while I finish scavenging this place? I'll make it worth your while. So, um, be careful out there. Before he does that, let me actually loot the place out, get some material and fuel, food, fuel out of here. Uh, now, the only issue is my character is tired. Um, so, defending him, I believe it's going to be like a two minute thing. It's really not that crazy. It's just a couple zombies here, and you might have to fight 15, 20 zombies over the course of the whole thing. I'm going to make sure I shoot a fair bit of them just to save myself on that stamina. Okay, so we're able to get a little bit of materials. Let's go throw that in the trunk real quick. Now, granted, I do have stamina items I could activate too. Uh, if I really did want to, you know, be a bit more melee happy, but we got we got some ammo, so we're good to go. We'll, we'll do a little shooting. We're suppressed. All right, let's see how long this is gonna last. Two minutes, a minute and 40, 50 seconds. Forty-seven seconds left. I'm gonna pop a stamina item. Now, if I didn't have that disruptor activated, this mission right here would have easily woken up the play cart in this region. Zombies invulnerable to fire. I guess this is as good as it gets in plague territory. Okay, so we're pretty spent right now on stamina. Okay, but we're done. We're good to go. Now, generally, this guy will hook you up with some resources, and then I think they'll usually be like, hey, by the way, can I join you? So, thanks for your help. No problem. We're good. Thanks. You went the extra mile, and you've earned a reward. Here you go. If you give me a chance, I won't let you down. Yep. So, he's, uh, grab the food. He's offering to join. So, let me see. Weapons-wise, he has a... I think that's a 22... Let's learn now. Okay, so 
He's got a good stamina trait. It's 130 stamina with no cardio. So that means he's got a stamina trait. A good one, too. Um, no fifth skill, so we can train him to be whoever we want. At this point, yeah, I would say he's Scotty's. Scotty's fine. Let, let's recruit him. Our first new addition. That's terrific. Come on back to base. You'll love it. Now I'm gonna grab now. That, now that we do have Scotty, our uh, people are gonna use up a little bit more food. But we've been maintaining our food uh, ins and outs pretty good, so uh, I'm not too worried about it. I will grab an extra bag out of here just. Just to cover. Let's see if we can also get the meds out of here. Yep, okay. Now, uh -huh. we just maxed out resourcefulness completely. So 35% surge speed. Um, damn, 70, minus 70% 70 consumable. I didn't even realize that. Hey, guys, we could really use your help with this shit right now. Our neighbors just stole every scrap of medicine yeah, we we're not. How are we supposed to put up with this bullshit? We're not going to worry about that mission right now. We're not, we're not trying to fight any no, more humans. I'm digging in. What this town needs is law and order. We can't stand by and watch bullshit like this happen. Yes, we can. This plan may involve a risk or two. <laughs> we can definitely stand by and watch this happen. Now, remember that feral pack is over here? Ooh, bloater. It still should be over here. Yep, those type of hordes hang around, persist for quite a while. They'll even persist through logouts sometimes. We don't put an outpost here. We're nuts. So we're out of, over on materials by one. Um, we could increase the size of our storage, or, and we can go. Oh, we need a mechanic for that. Actually, we just got homie LB here. Let's see if. Uh, here. I, I did I end up buying that mechanic book chat? I don't remember. I remember. Remember, I was like, oh. I, I should buy uh, the mechanic book. Or I'm going to regret it later. I don't remember if I actually bought it or not. I did. Awesome. So we're going to train this man right here to be our mechanic. Now this is going to do a few things for us. We're going to be able to craft repair kits. And I'll be able to craft a crossbow. Uh, somebody also in the comments said, Hey man, why haven't you, crafted, why, why haven't you got a crossbow yet? It's never too late to um, something new. We just didn't have the ability to get a crossbow yet. Yeah, I don't think so. All right, so we'll get him a better backpack. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter.
Right, we gotta we gotta outfit him. To the hoodie gang. Alright, so we got a new survivor. Got him on base defense with a weapon. Now let's switch over to We'll go to Wes. I believe Wes is stealth, yep. Now, we did get this crossbow here. We looted this one. I forgot about this one. But we can we also craft a light crossbow. But right now, I'm not super worried about crossbowing, only because uh, we got the Plague Disruptor active, so making a bunch of noise and shit doesn't matter. Well, making noise does matter, because we don't want to bring hell down on, down on top of us, but... Uh, well, the machine is active. We have no missions available on the map, guys. Things are clean and clear. Uh, we're going to go and look over resources. Let's see what we have here. Let's gear up. Hey, how's it going? We're going double nine mil. other echo weapons integrated so what we're going to do right now we're going to go over and check out the bounty broker i said i wanted to do it last episode i didn't really get a chance uh so we'll head over there we're going to check out what bounties are active right now and i can kind of give you guys a uh an understanding of you know the bounty broker and how it works now i also had another person comment um because last episode i was telling you guys about the bounty broker and you know how it's not really something i advise new players to really worry about it's it, the bounty broker was ultimately added to give you more stuff to do in the game this was before curveballs is before any of that so it was like once you got the end game there really was nothing you could do you know what i mean so undead labs came out with the bounty system which kind of gave us more to do with ongoing forever communities give us something to look forward to goals to push towards elo activities things to spend our resources on um but a lot of the bounties uh are very dangerous they they'll, they'll like oh you know or or cost resources so the person when they were like hey man you know i i kind of I, I i disagree with what you're saying about bounties there's a lot of bounties that are quite easy like all you got to do is drive around now that example is perfect like the fact that he said that one example driving around is very easy now unless you want to sit here and just get in your car and drive up and down this road Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you complete your ground. But nobody really wants to do that. That's grindy as fuck, boring as hell. Nobody wants to do that. But could you do that? Yeah, and that'd now be relatively safe. But the one thing about it that sucks is I don't care what bounty you're doing, it's gonna cost you resources. Even something as simple as driving 10 kilometers is gonna cost you, I think that bounty is two gas cans. Two, so you gotta spend fuel. There's no way around it. So there's always going to be some kind of resource cost tied to a bounty, whether it's bullets, whether it's gas, whether it's uh, some kind of crafting resource to make something. Like, yes, there are easy bounties, but every bounty in the game, for the most part, has either A, cost tied to it or risk tied to it. And generally, the risk has also a cost because in order to kill said freak you got to use some type of resource to kill it um and a lot of the methods of killing would say oh kill if it was just oh kill five ferals okay that's not that bad i mean lethal zone five ferals that's that's a pretty big deal but it'll be like kill five ferals with a revolver last time i checked revolvers are loud the ammo's expensive and that's not gonna, and they have low ammo capacity. So unless you're pegging your shots, you're gonna have to reload at least once uh, fighting a feral with a revolver. Unless you're just gun sling snap, and snap aim headshots, you know what I mean? But for the most part, you're probably gonna have to reload. And they're very, very loud. There's no way to suppress them. There's two revolvers that are suppressed in the game baseline, but unless you prep for that, which again, that, that automatically makes that 
bounty no longer easy because now there's a bunch of preparation that you have to do in order to even accomplish that bounty um you see what i'm saying so they're not something i would tell you guys to focus on as a new player now if you already have the bounties unlocked in a, in another uh playthrough and you can just go to the bounty broker and buy the weapons that you've already unlocked like i said last time i do agree you could do that but as for doing bounties in lethal zone it is quite dangerous quite dangerous in my opinion so what we're going to do is i'm gonna, we're going to go to the bounty broker right now the lucky ones just asked for a mission to give them fuel and that will make them full-blown allies actually thing is i don't really want to give them fuel <laughs> if i'm being honest i only have 11 at my base here so we'd have to loot a bag we're going over toward bounty broker um The gas station here where the impalers live, but now we can't even freaking loot it because that enclave's there. Man, there's not a whole lot of gas in that town either, man. What the heck? Fire station here might have some fuel. Uh, there is a gas station that right there that's looted. Um, maybe the shed here. So we're going to go check out the bounty broker. I'll give you guys a good breakdown of the bounties. It'll be a little bit easier for me to kind of explain to you to the cost behind bounties um, while we're sitting there staring at them. Now, one thing we could do for fuel is um, swing by an enclave. Now, we got to be careful. The feral pack was down here. So that's why I'm kind of parking right here. I want to grab some uh, cell items out of my outpost here. I want to boost up my influence as much as we can. There's one of them. Now this enclave usually has a bit more influence than the normal because they're that special enclave. Oh, they lost all their guns though. I oh, will buy this gas can. But yeah, they got a bunch of crap melee weapons. When we ignore that, we lose valuable supplies. Okay, so how are we looking on influence, guys? We are looking thirty, almost thirty-five hundred, almost thirty-five hundred. Okay, let's go check out the bounty broker now. Because I haven't done any bounties on this community in ages. <laughs> Um, all of the, uh, bounties are not done, so I'd have to actually complete them. Damn it. All right, we gotta, we gotta polish that up. Nope. Now we're down to one feral chat. That's very d manageable. We can take care of that. No problem. He might come all the way over here. One, Go for two, the three. 
Now, pulling up to the bounty broker, uh, it's in plague territory. We don't have to worry about waking up the heart just because, you know, we obviously have the disruptor active. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, but there might be some zombies that show up. size horde here okay if I could try to lure them around the back of the building here and then I can just get in my car and leave So we're clearing here, I'm gonna repair. Rather repair in, in the safety of, you know, this area than go over there and try to repair where we're going right now. Now, realistically, uh, I should have brought some fire with me because if not, I'm probably gonna have to shoot you some bullets. But generally, like I said, when you pull up to the bounty broker, you're gonna, you're gonna attract some attention. I don't even want to know what makes the air taste so bad. Now, I used to not know the path to get to this guy, so you, I used to go off-roading up to him, and it's super annoying. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you guys the actual path to just drive right up to him. So yeah, Plague Disruptor's doing its job. Okay, so what you want to do is this road here. I used to go and cut around and go up right there because he's right up there. Um, it's a little uneven. You just follow this road here. That's it. What I meant about company. You know me, just trying to make myself useful. Let me see what they do. That sucks. They're gonna scream. Make yourself at home. These fucking zombies are still going off. The reason why I'm paying attention is because they're going to make sure that they don't aggro something nasty over here to me. Let them do the thing. This should be okay. So we got cash here. This is the bounty broker. Greetings. All right. I have many bounties available. Please Ooh. take a look. Okay. So we got some good ones um, active right now, chat. Actually, um, this one comes uh, came out this month. Uh, Trumbull Valley Pack. This is one of my favorites. It allows you to get those integrated suppressed weapons. Every gun in here is suppressed, even the shotgun. So if you are more comfortable with fighting ferals with shotguns, um, 
this bounty is very, very good because you're going to get yourself a suppressed shotgun um, in the end of it. Now, this is one of those bounties I would definitely tell you to complete on another because look at look at what it requires. Kill four ferals with shotguns. Now, could you pull that off in this playthrough? Yes, you could. But first of all, you got to find a shotgun. You, then you got to have ammo for shed shotgun. Now, you, then you got to take the risk of fighting plague ferals in lethal zone with an unsuppressed shotgun which is going to make tons of noise, bring tons of zombies down on you. Um, now, granted, could you shoot and move and get the hell out of there quick? Yeah, but it's still a, a big risk. Um, but like I said, bounties are something that you can unlock on other communities. But this is one of the weapons I would definitely say get your hands on, especially if you have a hard time hitting ferals. This suppressed shotgun, is, it's nice. Then this um, right here. This uh, Echo S1 revolver is meta chat. It's one of my favorite guns in the game. Now, this is one that you can just grab. And as long as you're not going out of your way to do it, you have to use four gas cans in order to unlock this. This, I guess you could say, is one of the easier ones um, that doesn't really, but you still have to use gas. You know what I mean? No, over our playthrough, we're going to use gas naturally. Like even today's episode, I think I've already used three, four gas cans. So having this would have been nice, but no, none of these are free. You know what I mean? So a lot of the times, if you want to unlock this, you got to go out of your way, waste gas cans trying to get it. But if you're just like, you know what, I'm going to throw that this up, easy, but we'll, we'll get it when we get it. Um, now, this sniper here, this one is kill three screamers with crossbows while crouch. Got to go hunt freaks for this one. Um, and you need a crossbow. This one is pretty relatively... Eh, screamers are everywhere. You know what I mean? And as long as you're not killing bunches of them or a choir of screamers, uh, it's not too bad. But if, the problem is if you hit one screamer, the other one starts screaming, uh, which can make this situation messy. This one is have a teammate kill eight. Yeah, that ain't happening. Um, kill 14 zombies with a pistol. This is another one that we could kind of integrate into our, our playthrough. This gun really isn't worth it, though. It's only a seven slot, a suppressed 45. We have guns way better than that already. And then uh, the Echo uh, S4 here. This one, you got to collect four materials. So this one's also not that bad. It's one of those ones you can kind of just passively do. So, yeah, I guess uh, I'll, I'll take back what I said a little bit. I forgot some of these bounties only require you to loot. So there are some bounties that you can do that aren't super, super intensive, but they do get intensive if, if you go out of your way to do them. Like if it's just something you're like, OK, I'm going to I know um, I'm going to be gathering materials at some point. So if I threw this bounty on, but now if I was like, OK, I need to complete this bounty. But you're like, okay, now this is just an example. I got to get materials. Hmm, okay, my whole safe zone is dry. Now I got to go into plague territory to find a bag of materials. Okay, where, you know, like, okay, here. There's a bag of materials here that I could possibly loot. But now you guys see the risk tied to that. Now I got to go into here. Um loot a bag of materials risk waking up a play cart risk getting into a fight what all the risks that you know go especially this deep into plague territory that come along with just something as simple as looting materials um and for what a a, a gun might we you know what i mean um early game this might be something good to get your hands on because there's a lot of safe zone you can you can get this really really quickly but again I, I stand by the fact that i still advise you guys to unlock these bounties in lower difficulties and kind of just come and buy stuff from him in the higher difficulties now this pack here uh this uh ice axe is a decent melee weapon handguns not really worth it wood stove not really worth it it's a good morale thing but uh still not really worth it in my opinion stay frosty pack one of my favorites um Man, let me actually see. So right here, this uh, HBSD Blackout is one of my favorite guns in the game. It's so nice. But you got to kill two Juggernauts with assault weapons. Like, come on, bro. Shotgun is super na nasty. you got to kill one Plague Heart with a shotgun. Uh, this is a sniper shotgun. Kill 25 zombies with crossbows. We can unlock the Midnight Solace. Uh, this is a 50 cal. This is probably one of the easier 50 cals to get your hands on in the game. Um... So definitely try to get this. You got to kill five freaks with rifles. We could do this. Every moment is a fresh beginning. I 
And then some of these I have unlocked, as you can see, we can just buy them. Uh, like the car, the Mad Norma, we could buy that for 1500 That's so expensive, though. So, so, so expensive. Uh, but these three bounties here that we just grabbed, if you guys do kind of want to follow what I'm doing, these are pretty easy. Um, I'll show you how to do this rifle one. Farewell. Relatively effective and quiet and clean. So, yeah. Commenter, you were correct. I, I do apologize. There are some bounties that you can do that are... Uh, not that bad. Not that bad. So they wanted fuel. Hello out there. I have some goodies to trade straight from Trumbull Valley. Come on by. All right, we'll go over here. Actually. <clears throat> oh, man, it really is just no. Oh, I want oh, check this shit. as it can get this close to a play card. Ooh. That's why I like to stick to the roads, especially at night. Preluded. <clears throat> oh, that rare skill shirt is actually here. I don't want to stick around here for very long. Now, this trader is not bad, guys. It's, it's actually a pretty nice trader. Um, hey but it's more for, like, meta fine-tuning your community. Uh, you, I think we have better things to do than fight among ourselves. The cool thing about this trader is you can't sell crap to them, though. Like, Maybe you should just go ahead and get over yourself. They have huh? all the influence. Uh, but as you can see, these are some of the uh, quirk skills. Hygiene, uh, you know, fishing, like, and all, like, like, these are some pretty good uh, books to get. I They're very, very expensive. This, like I said, this is stuff that you kind of focus on when you're trying to do that meta fine-tuning your communities. Not super, super necessary. Um right now though in this stage of the game so i was trying to find a gas can chat that was in a decent area but there really isn't any the only place i could think to go is into the fire station area over here and then there's some up in this town here but there's also a gas station here. I feel like this one's going to be pre-looted. crappy thing is we didn't really accomplish a whole lot this episode <laughs> but we did get uh hopefully some good bits of knowledge for you guys that could have gotten a lot 
lot worse. So I wouldn't be messing with any of this if I didn't have that plague disruptor. That kind of does get, like I said, gives you so much more freedom. So if this is that freedom that you guys were kind of looking for, of course, it's a play card. Fuck, my eyes are burning. But yeah, if, you, if this like freedom of movement is something that you you know you you desperately need in your life, uh, especially in Lethal Zone because it does get pretty bad with the plague territory and waking up hearts, um, plague disruptors is where it's at. It is expensive though to upkeep. Uh, you know, you're talking almost 200 parts every single time you turn that bad boy on. So make sure you're milling your weapons that you're not using. So we're just coming in here trying to get this fuel rocking. Damn, this place looks full of stuff. Sometimes you can get repair kits out of here too. Oh, yeah. oh, boom. I like that. There it is. We might be able to get a gas can out of here. Oh, Perfect. Actually, throw that gas can on the car. Yeah, I haven't been being nice to the damn car. I think we've what, blown through like two repair kits today. Don't drive like me, chat. Like, try to be a little more conservative on your repair kits because I've already blown through like two. This episode ended, it was all unnecessary damage that shouldn't have even happened in the first place. So it was just me being, man, just driving around, fucking not being careful. Because that, that, that shit will catch up to you quick, guys. You gotta remember, every single repair kit you use is like 100 and something parts in Lethal Zone. Um, so so you want to make sure that you're, you're, you, you're using those when you need them. And trying to cut down on the amount of time that's because you know every time you use that, it's one less time you get to use plague disruptor or something like that. You know what I mean? So And I've already blown just think two thousand two over two hundred parts today, just in today's episode of, with my driving. That was pretty unavoidable. I mean, I think I could have backed up, but... What the fuck? What? it has got a screamer on the front porch?
Right. There you go, Addy. You might be okay after all. See you soon, I hope. Hi, come on in. Now they're allies, and we're getting food income, share of harvest. Let me see. So how much is their food? Per, per. I forgot where you see that. Is it? Yeah. Right. Um, damn, plus two food per day, guys. That's, a, that's an extra outpost. That is a very, very good enclave bonus. You're still alive. So we want to make sure we maintain relationships with these guys for sure. By the gas and the repair kit for a premium. We'll use this repair kit just to polish up the vehicle. Another triple barrel pack. as it can get this close to a play card. Oh, damn it. stick around here for very long definitely zombies all over the damn place so we did get one survivor recruited um, one of the things that we're gonna look into doing because we do have such a good amount of influence and we built up that nice trade network with all of our our enclaves we're gonna look in our box we're gonna see what we actually have for sale and look at getting more influence but uh I did want to show you guys about the legacy recruitment. We've got a zombie issue. How about you handle it for us? These damn guys. What up, everyone? I'm back. Okay, so um, as you guys know, my goal is to move into this base here, which is going to require six hours. So we still got to recruit two more people. Um, now, what we could do is we could obviously go and um, yeah, the, yeah, those are cannibals. They got. Um, we could go and just recruit from these enclaves, but I I'm enjoying my enclaves right now. Uh, there's probably like this one that we could probably break down. Um, Maybe this one, but I, I do like having my trade partners. So one of the things that I'm thinking is we'll only recruit one. And then I want to show you guys the. Uh, where the hell is it? Uh, right here. Recruit legacy survivors. So um in the beginning of the, the series, I went ahead and I showed you guys how you could start a game with Legacy Survivors. You can go, you can pick whoever you want. You don't have to worry about um, hero bonuses or, or their, their levels carrying over and the game being too difficult. Um, you can literally start the game with whatever survivors you want. Um, now, once the problem is once you started a game, there was no way to ever add any more of those people into the game. Then they came out with the Forever Community update, which also added the Legacy Recruitment, which now at any point during your playthrough, you can send people out of your community. So I can literally take any of these people and send them out of this community, 
and into my legacy pool and then recruit them into another community and vice versa. If you if say you have a standard zone playthrough and you got a blood plague survivor who's like and you're like, man, I really wish I had this survivor in my lethal zone playthrough. You can literally send them outside. Like right now, mine. Uh, let me actually move this for you guys so you can see. My key is not bound for whatever reason. I don't know why. Um, so I'd have to go into settings. But as you guys see, where it says unbound send uh, to legacy pool, you literally just go on the survivor and boom, you can just send them to the legacy pool, and then recruit them back into this community. But, but you gotta remember, sending them out is free. Recruiting them is not. That that costs the twelve hundred. So. Um, you got to make sure whatever community no, you want to send somebody to, they actually have the influence to be able to afford them. Now, how it works is, we'll come here. Now, there there is ways to kind of like cheese using this system. I'm not going to be teaching you cheese per se, uh, because I do feel like it can take a little bit away from the experience. But at the same time, it doesn't really matter. Um, play how you want to play. Now, what I mean by cheese is what you can do is you can go on to um any community right start a brand new community you go around loot a bunch of guns and ammo and, and and stuff stock a survivor's inventory full of just good stuff and then you can just send them to the legacy pool delete the community send all the people to the legacy pool and then you can come on a community like this and recruit them now the thing is is all of the items that the survivors are holding you'll be able to bring into this community um, so it, 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 you can load up guns, you can load up facility mods, things like biochem stations, all different types of things that you can load these survivors up with and then bring them into your community at the cost of 1200 influence. So not only are you only getting, you're getting a survivor, but you're getting all of the gear, consumables, whatever you have on that survivor, you can fully gear them out. You can put a rucksack on them, whatever you want, and you're pulling it into this community. So, um, that's your choice, how you want to approach it. I won't be breaking the game with mine or doing anything unfair just to, uh, just in case you guys can't do this or you don't have survivors that have good stuff on them. I still want you guys to be able to relate with the guide. But one thing I am considering is Red Talon survivors. Now, Red Talon survivors, you can get by recruiting here. Um, you can go and recruit these guys but these require prestige points special in-game currency that you get from completing daybreak um ho hopefully you guys have already done some of those you've gotten some red talons in your earlier playthroughs now what happens is, is if you did buy red talons from before because i've done it i've had a ton of them then i finish community they go in my legacy pool instead of wasting more points on another red talon just pull them out of your legacy pool so for instance that's what we're going to be showcasing here so Right now, I'll go recruit You're legacy. To zombie radio. Any caller is a winner. Anyone. Got it. I'll see if our network contacts can find someone nearby who can help you out. Boom. So once you hit that, it brings up your community screen. Now, what used to happen is it, it suck. You would spend 1,200 influence, and if you accidentally backed out of the screen, you never you didn't get your influence back. It was just gone. I don't know if they fixed that bug. <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna still look here, um, but we're looking for a red talon. Now the way you can tell the red talons is the guys with the masks here. You can see they got the masks on. So I have three of them. I have this one whose fortifications not really helpful for what I'm aiming for in this community. This guy's gut packing. Um, now that is very good for this community. And then we have a hacker, which is also very good. Now the hacker gives you an extra outpost slot. Uh, one of my favorite red talons. I think it's it's pretty meta because you, you, it allows you to have seven outposts and over to six. And then gut packing, if you don't know what that does, it gives you... Let me switch over to this. There we go. Um, it gives you knowledge of cooking, knowledge of nutrition, and 30% overall food consumed um in your community so uh, it's like kind of like enacting like a little mini rationing but it just goes forever so gut packing is really really good you, people just will eat 30 percent uh less food um so that's really really good now you can see this guy has no gear on him uh he's prepped up i could recruit him and it's not going to break the game whatsoever Understood. okay we did get, shit i did not mean to do that you're listening to zombie radio any callers okay so they did fix it you do get refunded and it doesn't go on cooldown. It used to, you used to not get refunded, and it would go on cooldown. Okay, so now the hacker, which is a diehard veteran. Um, now, if you look at this survivor, 
and their loadout. If I were to recruit this person, I would get all of this stuff. All of it. Um, we'd get the Mac 10. We'd get this freaking Preppers 8K47. We'd get the first aid kits, the stims. A lot of this stuff's not too big of a deal. The guns really aren't too big of a deal. Um, the scent block, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, Molotovs. We'd get some ammo. We'd get some play cures and some bloater gas. So as you can see, this survivor here is just geared to the teeth. Um, now, this is the survivor I wanted to recruit. I didn't know that they had this gear on them. So what I think I'm going to probably do is in between episodes, I'm going to go and I'm going to empty the survivor out. Now, how you can do that is you start a community. Uh, just uh, You know what? Screw it. I'm just going to show you guys how to do it right now. Uh, because it's a it's a helpful little trick if you want to know how to move stuff around um, in in the game. I'm not even going to put a jump cut right here, guys. We'll just we'll just I'll just show you straight up. So you go to menu. This wasn't a part of my my plan, but I feel like this is good knowledge. <clears throat> okay. Manage community. Um, I got an empty slot here. So skip tutorial. Doesn't matter what difficulty. Uh, you just doesn't matter what map. Just pick. I don't know. Providence is fine. None of this matters. Skip right over. So now here's where it matters. Now we want to grab the legacy survivors that I wanted to empty out. So for instance, Malloy here is the one that we want to recruit. She has all this gear on her, so I'm going to recruit her. She goes there. Now what's going to happen is we're going to try to find one of these survivors here who has an empty inventory like this. Okay? The more space is the better. So this survivor has a complete empty inventory. I'm going to recruit her. Whoops. And then, just in case I needed more space to dump more stuff, um, this guy has an empty inventory, so we'll recruit him. Now, we just start the community. Now, some people get scared when it comes to deleting communities. They're like, oh, well, if I delete a community, am I going to lose my legacy? No, if that survivor was in the legacy hey, pool at any point, um, would you delete that community? So Whose turn is it to find more fuel? You have the option to put them Not back me. in the legacy pool. Last time I almost <clears throat> choked to death on a bloater. This you could just skip. I have a bet. Okay, so it, it perfect. RNG worked out perfect. So it actually put me on the survivor here. So sometimes you gotta go play musical inventory, but um I'm on the survivor that I want to empty out, which is perfect. Some fucking roots. So we How come to her, down. access Probably inventory, switch to mine, and then I just start. This already. It's time for okay. us to find new digs. Have her equip those guns. That way, it's better. It's time for us to find new digs. Boom, boom, and place to put that. we'll keep the shovel. It doesn't really matter. All right. So now this survivor's inventory, as you guys can see, is completely empty. Um, all the stuff is on her. So what you do is you literally just go back to the menu. Now, this goes for vice versa. If you want to put something on a survivor that you want to bring into your community, you would just do this same exact thing, just the opposite. So you can go around any of your legacy survivors when you're when you're when you're looking around your pool, uh, which you can come here and check your legacy pool at any point in time. Um, you can check these survivors like, oh, OK, I, I need this, this and this. And you could come around and just sit here and play musical gear with all of your legacy survivors. Um, you know, like this one has the echo at repeating crossbows in my biochem station. If I wanted that in my community, I could go and, you know, rearrange, get all the stuff that I wanted onto said survivor that I'm going to recruit and then bring it in. You could do this endless amount of times. So what you do now to get them back in the legacy pool is you go to the community that you just created and you just delete it. Now what happens is it'll bring this screen up right here and then you just say, I want to put, um, I want to put this person in the pool this person in the pool and this person and there it is you just put them back in your legacy pool and then you delete the community and that's it now what you do is you go back to your actual playthrough
And now we can sit here. Bring up the recruit. You're listening to Zombie Radio. Any caller is a winner. Anyone. Request received. We'll ask around for any local volunteers. All right. And then we click on her now. And as you can see, her, her stuff is empty. And now we can just recruit. We have a volunteer headed to your location. Courtesy of the network. Hi there. Welcome to your new home. And awesome. Thanks for letting me join up. And it's that simple, guys. And now we have a fifth survivor. Her her um her fifth skill because she was a red talon went active already. We don't have to worry about it. And boom. Now she is a part of the community. So if you've already bought red talons in the past, um, and you want one in your lethal zone community, you can take them out of say say you have a dread zone community that you've had forever, and you got some red talon survivors that have been sitting there collecting dust. You can go on that community and send them out of it. Literally, just click on them, send to Legacy Pool, uh, and then that way you don't have to buy them again. All right, because I know some people are like, damn, dude, I got like three red towns I recruited on this old standard zone community. I don't want to, like, you don't, you don't just go on that community, send them to the Legacy Pool, and you could pull them into any community that you want. Um, and it'll, it stops you from having to go and grind out those those uh, prestige points, which are you know they, they are quite grindy and annoying. Um, but yeah, this is just a little a little thing that you could do. And now we have her in the community. As you can see, we're up to five people, but we are eating a bit more food. We're losing five food a day. Um, so one of the things that we're gonna make sure that's active. And no can do. Yeah, so to work on something of my own for a bit. So there it is, guys. Uh, we're going to leave this episode here. Uh, I appreciate you guys once again for coming. I know this was a bit of a slow one. Uh, hopefully I gave a bunch of knowledge. I know we didn't do too much in the in the actual playthrough itself today, but uh, we got just some setting the groundwork for, you know, making bigger moves. We're only one survivor away from being able to move into that bigger base. So I guess we did accomplish that. We got to figure out how what six we're going to use and, and, and go from there. So uh, thank you guys again. Next episode, we're going to be targeting some play carts and um, probably the one that's down to the south there. And then we're going to start focusing on the two that up to the north of the new area that I want to move to. Um, but again, thank you so much. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought about the episode. If you're enjoying the series and you want more, all you gotta do is smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. And uh, other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.